Hey everybody, Matt Graham, MBS Live, here with you on Monday, May 4th, 2020. May the 4th be with you. You heard that one yet today? I hadn't. Probably going around. Anyway, chalk that up to the dad joke column. How about bond markets? Things are relatively okay. A little bit weaker today. Not a big deal in the bigger picture. MBS weakening into the afternoon and then bouncing, especially in 2.5 coupons, as you can see on the chart, versus 2.0 coupons, which have sort of flattened out at lower levels. Bigger story, potentially, later this week especially, will be treasuries and treasury issuance. We get the quarterly refunding announcement on Wednesday morning. It can be a big market mover. We know there's going to be a lot of issuance announced. $300 trillion in total for the quarter. That's not all going to be in the coupons or the maturities that we are typically interested in, but it is debt supply. And debt supply is the big bad actor as far as putting upward pressure on yields in general. We have a ton of corporate debt issuance recently, and that is putting upward pressure on yields today. Big deal from Apple announced this morning. And if you're not familiar with how corporate issuance affects bond prices and mortgage rates in general, take a look at the primer, go to the help menu, which in the new dashboard will be either this magnifying glass here or along the left-hand menu, searching the knowledge base or the search menu here, and type in the word issuance. It will take you through to this primer, read that guy, and uh, it'll give you some background on how the corporate bond issuance process puts upward pressure on rates in general. But if you don't want to click that, and if you want it the, just the simplest possible explanation, just think of it in terms of supply and demand, and the fact that investors have a choice as to, well, some investors have some degree of a choice as to which bonds they're going to buy to satisfy their bond market cravings. If there's a ton of well-priced corporate debt on the market, they could conceivably buy that instead of buying treasuries and MBS. Therefore, treasuries and MBS have to drop in price to get the business back. Dropping in price means higher yields, higher rates. There we go. There are other factors that create temporary inflows and outflows related to corporate issuance. And that's what you'll find if you read that primer. But it's a little bit detailed for this particular video. Now, if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, wait, it would be cool if you went into additional detail and explained this stuff on videos. Don't worry. That stuff is in the works right now, actually. And I will probably put out a couple of those this week to introduce you to the new dashboard. And then if you have an interest in videos that talk about knowledge-based content, I can put those together too. Just let me know. Uh, shoot me an email, mgram at mbslive.net, or use the help menu and select contact us. And I'll take a look at your question. As far as market movement elsewhere, in terms of stocks and bonds, stocks have managed to recover after moving lower in the overnight session. And we're not seeing a ton of correlation in the short term right now, or the bigger picture for that matter. Talked about that a bit in the day ahead. Definitely read that if you haven't, or at least take a look at those charts. Interesting stuff going on with respect to how the Fed, vary, the Fed's various announcements seem to set the tone in terms of momentum. Uh, so for those of you who, like me at times, scratch your head and wonder, how can stocks go so much higher so steadily? I think the Fed announcements, especially the March 23rd announcement, helps to explain a lot of that. The question is, when will that euphoria wear off? And when it does, if stocks happen to move lower, will that be enough of a safety bid? Will that make investors seek safety to such an extent that it will create more demand for treasuries? That's certainly one place demand could come from as we are facing down this epic load of debt that I talked about at the beginning of the video. From a lock float standpoint, one thing I might look at right now would be, let's say, a one-month chart of UMBS 2.5s and candlesticks. And in looking at that, I might note that uh, we've spent more time recently sort of bouncing at this ceiling around 10408 and seem to maybe be moving to the lower end of the recent range and probably have some room to run there. But in any event, a narrowing range centered on roughly 104. So anytime we're moving under 104, as we are from Friday to today, 
might be a little bit more defensive, but if we happen to bounce and get one of these nice green looking candlesticks like we did back on the 22nd or on the 28th, that might make me feel a little bit more risk tolerant. I would say keep in mind at the beginning of the month, we can see trading positions sort of flowing of their own volition, not necessarily in connection to any specific event. Granted, the treasury issue and stuff that I mentioned could set the tone in a general sense, but in the big picture, we are very much waiting to see what happens and not anytime soon, more like what happens months from now. How the economy reopens, how the coronavirus numbers do, and how the economic data responds to all that. And how the market is faring with respect to taking down the new issuance. Because we know we're going to get it, we just don't know how well the buying and selling of it's going to go, and how involved the Fed's going to want to stay, and if that causes any inflation pressure, which some, some people think it might. A lot of uh, variables left to be determined, and it wouldn't be a surprise to see the general... Momentum remains sideways for yields until uh, some of those variables can be more definitively resolved. Not a very active strategic lock float environment. If you want to capitalize on trying to get to shorter lock time frames or just generally trying to follow lenders tightening their margins as things calm down in the secondary market and the servicing market, to whatever extent they do calm down, that's a viable strategy, but you have to know the type of fire you're playing with and be ready to get out if the getting is good. That's going to do it for today. Back with you guys tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.